Hey guys, it's Greg Alexander, and today I want to start a little short mini series on line and which line you should use and the properties of each line and which situations are best to use it in, what pound tests, what rods, what reels, the whole deal. So today we're going to do the first part and it's about fluorocarbon. And with fluorocarbon, you need to remember the four S's of fluorocarbon that distinguish it from other lines. The first S is it sinks. The second S is it's sensitive. The third S is sight. In other words, it's invisible. And the fourth S would be stretch, limited. So understanding that those are the four properties of fluorocarbon and basically what it's designed to do, let's get into the pros and cons of fluorocarbon, when to use it, which techniques it's good for, which techniques it's not good for, and in the end I'm going to give you a few tips about fluorocarbon that'll help you to be a better fisherman. So let's get right into it. The cons of fluorocarbon. One of the biggest cons of fluorocarbon as compared to standard everyday running the mill monofilament is it's expensive. You know, a spool of fluorocarbon can cost five to ten times what a spool of the same test monofilament costs, which, you know, that can be a deterrent for a lot of people, and I understand that. It's a deterrent for me. When I go in and I, and I want to get a, you know, a, a, a bulk spool of my favorite size line, and it's a hundred and some dollars, and I'm like, good, and it's great, I can get a bulk spool of monofilament for like 30. So, you know, it, it's a big deterrent. Uh, the other really only biggest con to fluorocarbon is if you kink fluorocarbon, in other words, if you get a backlash in your reel where the line actually folds over in there and you don't pull it out without it getting a you know a 180 degree kink in it on the end that kink's gonna break it's gonna break on you it's gonna break on the cast it's gonna break on the hook set it's gonna break when you're reeling the fish in fluorocarbon is very strong it's very abrasion resistant it can come through you know some sketchy stuff you know concrete and steel bars and things like that a lot of times without any nicks on it whatsoever but if you get a kink in there and you keep fishing with it, you're, you, you're setting yourself up to fail because that is its biggest, to me, its biggest single drawback is that kink is going to cause you. I've tried to fish through the kinks before on it and it'll always cost you. So there are the biggest two cons of fluorocarbon. So when do you use fluorocarbon versus braid and monofilament? And I'm going to talk about braid in its own video and I'm going to talk about monofilament in its own video but I'll do some comparisons here today. So I generally use fluorocarbon mostly for pitching and flipping and moving baits, underwater moving baits. And pitching and flipping, the reason I use it mostly is because of its abrasion resistance and because of its sensitivity. It's way more sensitive than monofilament. In other words, so if you have, you know, if you, some people have hands of steel. You know, some people just don't feel good. I, I've got friends of mine who they don't like to flip and pitch because they, they don't even know when they have a fish until it's literally like pulling. They don't know it. And others are pretty good at, at, at feeling with pretty much anything. I mean, I learned to catch them with monofilament. So once I got uh, fluorocarbon, started using fluorocarbon, it became real evident that I was getting a bite because you can feel him the thump, the tap, the 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 knock, whatever you want to call it, on there. So you'll it's a lot easier to identify a bite with it. And because of its low stretch properties, if you've got this fish down in a brush pile or a tree or behind a pylon or something like that, and when you hit him and bring him with the rod and the, the low amount of stretch you got a lot more control over that fish. So for, you know, short line flipping and pitching, 
I would almost always use fluorocarbon. I don't use braid in that situation. I'll explain that in the braid video that I'm going to do. The next use for fluorocarbon is any type of underwater moving bait situation with a few exceptions. If you're reeling spinner baits or chatter baits or swim jigs or some crankbaits, not all, I don't like it in every situation, I'll explain why, then that is a, a, a probably my go-to type of line is fluorocarbon. Again, because of its ability to sink, because of its ability to not have much stretch, and it, it gives me more control over the fish and more feel of what's going on. And so there, that's basically what fluorocarbon is good for, which makes it good for most applications. And the third way or the third application for fluorocarbon would be for leader material. And when I say leader material, you've got a main line of monofilament or a main line of braid or even a main line of larger uh, fluorocarbon. And you want to tie a length of leader onto the end of it in fluorocarbon with you know, your, your jam knot, your Albright knot, your double uni knot, whichever knot that you use to connect the two that's appropriate for fluorocarbon to braid a fluorocarbon and mono. Uh, and when would you use a leader? You would use a leader for a drop shot a lot of times to prevent the line twist that you would get with straight fluorocarbon. Uh, you would use a leader with, you know, maybe a shaky head where you feel like you can get more feel if you're making longer cast, but you don't want the fish to feel or see the lure, so you would use a long fluorocarbon leader. Or sometimes you would use a fluorocarbon leader when you're flipping and pitching in clear water situations where you feel like the line, braid, or whatnot would be a deterrent, but you feel like you need the braid to either cut through heavy grass or to get the fish out of barnacles, things like that, which would cut fluorocarbon a lot easier. But you still want that clear leader for the subtlety of it. So you would tie it, you know, onto heavier braid a lot of times. So there are the three types of, of leader situations where you could use fluorocarbon. And the fourth application for fluorocarbon versus other lines are long cast. You're making extremely long casts. You know, you got to stay way off of the fish. You're throwing a deep diving crankbait. You want to make a long, long cast with it. And if you were to throw monofilament in those situations, then, you know, you'd get too much stretch. Say you're throwing like a 6XD or 10XD crankbait and you throw it on monofilament and you're making a long cast and the fish bites at the end of the cast and you just... You know, when you set the hook, even with a long rod, you still haven't even taken all the stretch out of the line yet. So the fish has a really good chance of not getting hooked properly. Or you're making long casts, you know, to a uh, small mouth or really clear water fish or very pressured fish that you need to stay way off of. And, you know, fluorocarbon is going to be the line for you for that distance that you, that you need to have because it won't stretch on you. So now let's talk about the weight line that you would use for which applications. And for flipping and pitching, I would generally use a fluorocarbon line in the 14 to 25 pound range. Some people can go a little bigger than that with fluorocarbon. You know, if they're really feeling like, you know, the one situation I would go bigger than that maybe with fluorocarbon is if you're punching hydrilla or milfoil, heavy milfoil with a heavy weight. And most of the times, you know, you probably would use braid for that situation, but sometimes, you know, you'll get extra bites if you can get away with a fluorocarbon in that situation because that braid tends to sing. It makes a noise, a noise as it's going up and down through this grass, and sometimes these bass get conditioned to it. So then you can upgrade, you know, like 35 or even 40 pound or even 50 pound uh, braid sometimes with a heavy line or with a heavy weight to punch in. But 14 to 25 pound is gonna pretty much cover the basis for you for flipping and pitching 
14 pound obviously smaller fish less cover uh, more pressured situations with fish or you need to bait the sink a little bit faster you know in the heavier end you know you're dealing 25 pound you're dealing with bigger fish heavier cover bigger weights of lures and somewhere in the middle you know if you don't want to fool with the 25 having one rod with 25 and one rod with 14 on it and you just kind of are willing to sacrifice a few bites on both ends for convenience sake then you would stick with you know 16 to 18 pound fluorocarbon for most of your flipping and pitching situations and if you're geared right you know if you get the right rod and the right reel to go with it and you know what you're doing you can catch some awful big fish on those weight on that weight of line now other line sizes of fluorocarbon that you'd be interested in you know when you're talking about your 10 to 14 pound line class of fluorocarbon 10 is kind of on the upper end of finesse you know with drop shots and shaky heads and tubes but depending on the situation the water clarity the fish pressure how deep you need to get you know 10 may be if you can get away with 10 that's going to be fine for those situations but you know 10 pound 12 pound 14 pound fluorocarbon to me is basically for fishing smaller style power baits or smaller style crank baits or jerk baits even you know if you're throwing suspended jerk baits 10 pound you know 12 pound sometimes is good uh you know 14 pound for like a square bill crank bait or small spinner baits you know you're dealing in now you're dealing with the weight of the lure versus the line size because you know if you're going to try to throw just take example here if you're going to try to throw a little one 1 1.0 or 1.5 square bill on 25 pound fluorocarbon you're going to have difficulty being accurate with it because the line just not going to be as responsive it's not going to come off of your reel and your rod near as well as that lighter line is so it gives you accuracy in those situations and it's also you know size appropriately uh, so that you can cast it at all so stay you know stay in the right line class with the technique that you're shooting for you know if you're throwing a three-quarter ounce spinner bait you're probably not throwing it on 10 12 or even 14 pound fluorocarbon you know you're probably throwing that on 18 or 20 pound fluorocarbon you understand the weight of your lure and the distance you're casting and the accuracy you're looking for would all dictate you know what line you're throwing matched with the proper rod and reel setup too which we'll talk about a little bit and then there's fluorocarbon for finesse situations you know we're talking generally finesse situations with fluorocarbon line if you're finessing you're dealing with either highly pressured fish or clear water fish or deep fish you know that you need this lighter line to be able to even get to the fish properly and you know generally when you're dealing with finesse for me it's six or eight pound six pound or eight pound fluorocarbon eight pound would be my go-to 90 percent of the time it covers almost all the bases when would you change to six? Well, when you know the fish are there, you're not getting bit. Maybe the wind's pushing your stuff around a little bit too much. Maybe you need to be throwing a little bit lighter weight because, you know, the fish are so used to everything that they're seeing. You want a little bit more finesse out of it. So you want to lighten the weight up to get more bites and you'll go to six pound line. Uh, eight pounds going to cover the bases most of the time. And if you can get away with it with finesse, 10 pound. But here's the problem with, you know, if you take a spinning reel, and you put 12 or 14 pound fluorocarbon on it you're gonna have all kinds of problems because fluorocarbon is like a spring you know it's gonna to want to jump off your reel it's gonna to want to kink up it doesn't like those that bigger fluorocarbon doesn't like the spinning reel application uh, you can get away with it to some degree but 10 pound and down is probably what you would be considering for fluorocarbon finesse applications drop shot shaky head ned rigs split shot rigs and things like that so now that we've talked about you know the different size lines that you would use in different situations with fluorocarbon 
let's talk about some of the brands that you would use. Now, most popular brands of fluorocarbon line are going to be pretty good. Some are better than others. I'm just going to talk to you from, from my personal experience of which ones that I use. And the reason I use them is because I've had the least amount of trouble with them or they perform the best for the situations that I use. So again, there's like almost like three categories for me. I don't use the same brand fluorocarbon depending on the test line that I use. Why? Because these different fluorocarbons are made up of some different materials. Some fluorocarbons are stiffer and some are more limber. Just like with monofilament, we have XL line and XT line. The same thing goes with fluorocarbon. So if you're using, you know, heavy, heavy leader material, then, or even, you know, medium stock weight leader material, then probably one of the better fluorocarbons to use for leader material only would be the Tatsu line. It's a pretty expensive line, but it's tough, super tough. It's got a harder shell on it, takes a little bit of the limberness out of it, so a little bit of the action out of it. So that's why I would say I would use that as leader material only and only for heavier type of situations, you know, 14 pound on up. And then the next line I would use, now this is this is my for where I live here in the mid-Atlantic area, you know, we're not dealing with a lot of giant fish. We're, you know, a five pounder is not something that's caught on a regular basis around here. I mean, maybe, maybe one out of every four tournaments we fish, somebody catches a five pounder in some of these tournaments around. So it's not, it's not a fish that we catch a lot. We don't catch a lot of big fish. Uh, so my go-to line after years and years of fooling with it in different lines is this line right here. Sunline FC Sniper, 16 pound. Now they also make an 18 pound. Uh, I find the 18 pound is maybe a little bit more wiry, you understand, just a little bit more harder to deal with. And I haven't noticed enough of a difference in its strength, cause so many issues to go to 18. Now, I will throw 20 pound on occasion if I'm fishing really, you know, tough stuff, or I'm throwing a heavier weight lure, like a big jig or a heavy weighted stick worm punching, you know, um, mixed grass, not super thick grass. I may go to 20, but 16 or 20 usually is what I'm going to use in the Sunline FC Sniper brand. And why have I chose the FC Sniper brand? Well, because I fooled around with a bunch of the other brands over the years, and I find most of them are either, they either break too easy, they kink too easy, or they're just hard to deal with. Like I say, they're a little bit too wiry, not soft enough. So that's why I would use that. And then when I'm getting into a finesse situation, I change lines again. In a finesse situation where I'm either throwing, you know, straight fluorocarbon, or most of the time I'm throwing like a long three, one, two, three arm length leader on a shaky head or a drop shot uh, or a Ned rig, then I'm gonna go to Seaguar and Vizx. Eight pound would be my go-to weight for that. Like I said, express early when I would chain from that. And then, you know, if you're dealing with just like a straight, heavy, heavy flipping situation, a uh, big fish, heavy cover, then you're gonna wanna go to like a, maybe a 25 pound line. And, you know, Strike King, Tour Grade Fluoro 45, makes a really tough line. It's wiry, but you're not, you know, this is not long line situation. This is very short line situations when you're throwing this, then that, that Tour Grade 25, is a good line for those extreme heavier situations. Now I'm going to finish this video with three tips for fluorocarbon line that you need to know in order to be more efficient and a better fisherman, have less issues. And the first tip I'm going to give you is when using any line, even fluorocarbon line, it's very important to maintain your line tests in the, rec the rod's recommended line range. And what am I talking about? Well, 
a lot of you already know, but some of you don't. And hold on for the other two tips. On the bottom of every rod, every rod, there's a little sign. And on that sign, it's going to tell you what the recommended line test is for the rod that you're throwing. So if you're throwing a line that's smaller or larger than what the rod is recommended for, then you're costing yourself fish because you're costing yourself accuracy. You're, you're going to you're taking a chance of breaking off. You know, I had a friend of mine years ago came to me and said, man, I'm having a hard time here. I'm breaking off a lot of fish. And the first thing I asked him was, well, what line are you using? He said, I'm throwing 10 pound. I think at the time it was XL fluorocarbon or a XL bass pressure up XL monofilament, not fluorocarbon. And I said, well, what rod are you using? And he told me, well, I'm using this particular rod and this particular reel. And I looked at his rod and his reel, and I'm like, well, the rod's rated for like 14 to 25 pounds, and you're throwing 10 pounds on it. No wonder you're breaking fish off. So understand that you have to properly match your line, whether it's fluorocarbon or any other style of line, to the rod that you're throwing. The second tip I would give you, if you're using fluorocarbon, and it's expensive, that you would always back your reel with cheap line. You know, go to a point in your reel where you never cast to that distance and fill out, you know, fill that first part of your reel up with the cheapest line you've got or an old spool of line that you hated that you don't use on that you don't use anymore. And you would fill that reel up to a certain point and then tie your fluorocarbon on with a proper knot, double uni, all right knot, jam knot whatever you know there's a lot of knots that people use but a proper knot and that'll save you a lot of money and then when you change lines you're gonna have to change line down to you know a good cast or so past where you would normally be able to cast in your line and it won't cost you as much money to maintain and the third tip I would give you is especially with fluorocarbon always use a line conditioner they make several of them. You know, there's little spray on line conditioners that you put on there. And what that does for you is that tends to make the line a little bit more supple. Also tends to make the line cast farther, goes through your eyes better, gives a little bit more lubricity in the whole situation there and will just improve your game just that little bit and take away some of the hassle of what fluorocarbon line can do. So you'll know you know, you, I, by trial and error, I found out, you know, over years of fishing that fluorocarbon is just not good for everything. So I see some of these videos, fluorocarbon versus mono, which one to use? Well, it's all situational, like I've been talking about, situational. And let me just add one thing here at the end. I didn't talk about it. I should have talked about it earlier. Is when would you not use fluorocarbon? Just definitely never not use fluorocarbon. I never ever use fluorocarbon with a topwater lure. Buzz bait, a frog, prop bait, a walking bait. And why? Well, if you use fluorocarbon with a topwater lure, fluorocarbon sinks and it will always pull the nose of your bait down. Especially with like walking baits or even frogs it's going to kill the action of that bait. There's certain baits like some of these uh, uh, minnow style, dead minnow style baits like Brian's Bees and things like that. If you tie fluorocarbon on, you might as well not even throw the bait. It's just not going to work. So, you know, never use fluorocarbon with top water baits because the key with the top water baits, you want to keep it on top and fluorocarbon is going to want to take it down. So you don't ever want to do that. And the other time I personally wouldn't use fluorocarbon would be with like finesse crankbaits, small square bills, uh, small, you know, 200 series type crankbaits. Because I'm not casting them real far a lot of times. And I really, in those situations where on a long cast, you don't want any, any stretch, you know, because you got to take all that line up. On a short cast, with a small treble hook lure, you need the stretch. And sometimes you can't get all the stretch you need in the rod that you're throwing, even if it's a crankbait style rod, 
So for me, fluorocarbon is not the line to use in that particular situation. So again, if you like my videos and want to watch me on a regular basis, basis, please hit the subscribe button, the like button, the little bell, alert bell thing, and you'll get alerts on videos. And stay tuned for my next couple videos on both braid and monofilament. And thanks for watching, and have a blessed day.